set. Okay. All right. Well, everybody, this is Angular TV, and I'm on with Sargel18, and it's going to be quite the conversation. So, I suggest you stay tuned for a very interesting time. Sargel, are you there? Yes, I am. Hello. Hello. Hey, How you doing? Hey, everyone. What's going on? Uh, well, tonight we're going to do our first uh, interview in uh, in. Um Tele, uh, radio interview and I believe two years and uh, we're coming out with a lot of new things on the website and um, the Rings of Light organization is launching in August and we're going to have uh, a lot of interaction with Sarge L18 and just about anybody that wants to have interaction. Great, great. We're sitting around. No. Well, that's good. You know, so uh, this is great and I'm glad to be doing your show and I hope everyone listens and has questions and all kinds of neat stuff. Me too. I, I think that they will after they watch the show, and then they can just click right on your website at sargel18.com. Mm-hmm. Then they can chat, and they can leave messages and ask questions, and uh, they can interact twice a week on Tuesday and Sunday night, Eastern Standard Time, 10 to 11. I'm in the chat room, and I will be until uh, I die. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Which would be a long time. <laughs> All right. Like a handful of times. Right. You know, but we had some good chats, and I think that you're an interesting guy, and I like you, you know. Thank so you. I think that people should listen to you and what things you have to say. So what? we're going to... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, it's okay. I was just going to say, so we're just going to give a brief, you know description of you and what you do and this way you know if people want to investigate for themselves they can just go right to your site you know like a site. all right you want me to describe myself yeah oh. i'm yeah you might as well just tell because oh. I, I don't really know how to describe you well any i'm uh i'm uh well, i did a lot of different descriptive words for me but let's say as simple as possible is i'm a alien hunter a reality hunter and a cryptozoologist. That's what I do. That's the evidence that comes out of the vortex. The vortex in Wanakee, New Jersey, I searched for for 10 years. And finally, on February 10th, 1998, contact was made. The doorway appeared. The, the good aliens, thank God, appeared. Um, not the negative ones for that uh, meeting. And um, my whole life kind of like fell into place exactly uh, where I was going in my destiny. I brought this information out on national television, radio, books, everywhere. And then in 2000, I realized that uh, I wanted to see if other people were going to like catch up and what was going to happen and if my predictions were going to come true about September 2001 and about 2003, the war, uh, which we know they did. And uh, I wanted to see what was, where it was going. And uh, I basically waited for seven years. You know, I've sat quiet, canceled all lectures, all television, everything. Just did a couple here and there, uh, radio and, uh, and newspaper uh, articles or interviews. But I basically waited, and now I'm back because the time is close for uh, world-changing events, I believe. Um, you know, they might look at the TV right now and say, oh, well, that's a bunch of bullshit, and there's no such thing as aliens and blah 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 but they're the right. first ones to run home and watch Star Trek and learn, like, Klingon, which, like, we know is just something made up, <laughs> or whatever, like, sci-fi, you know, whatever. If you look at the whole, what's popular on TV, it's, you know, Ghost Hunters, this, Taps, you know, all that shit, but yet nobody believes in it. It's all a crock of shit. And so then you have pictures of things that, um, whatever, exist. I, I can't say what they are because I don't know, so I would just rather you do it. Well, but when people, let's say like the Trekkies and all the people that, that get into all the sci-fi stuff where they really go like crazy over Right, it. overboard. It's a little excessive. But I'm just saying yes. that, you know, as a term to use right. for hypocritical. Well, see, they always, in 1998, I was signed by major television people in New York City to a five-year contract to do a, basically a ghost hunter show, the same ghost hunter show that you see on TV now. But uh, when I did this, and I took them out every time, and I would come back with fantastic evidence, 
they decided not to put me on because they said right out that people, no matter how much they want to believe, have to have that little bit of doubt that it's not real in them and you're not leaving any doubt. You right, know, so basically, like, yeah. Isn't that what it's about? Isn't that why you signed me up? And they're like, no, we have to have the doubt. And that's the same thing with all these people. As much as they want to believe. Right, well, that's kind know? of like what I'm saying. And, you know, but it's just funny the way that works. It is. is. And actually, it's not just them, too. It's, right. Uh, a lot of, a lot of people. In the world um, who uh, preach the uh, New Age metaphysical popular beliefs, uh when I meet with them, that they they just don't want any, anything to do with me. Right. I mean, I don't have anything against it, but I just think it's funny the way that things work. You know, it that is. the remote possibility is. is just unheard of. But yet, if you you know you run home to watch something on TV that's like totally fake, and you know it's fake. You know what I mean? And some right. things, I I think that I'm beginning to believe that people would rather believe in fake things than in real things. <gasps>